Hulk Shoe. Recorded live. Well, good evening, everybody. This is Larry Phillips again, and you joined us for the evening service of the Weatherby Pineville Grace House Church. And my voice is pretty bad, so bear with me. Mark has agreed to help me tonight, <clears throat> and we're going to be doing a study on the book of Hebrews. So that's going to be what what we're going to be focusing on tonight. And I'm just going to make sure that this is working. I'll go check my make sure that this is actually recording and it does look like that it is recording right now. Now this um, broadcast tonight is, you know, Hebrews is one of my favorite books in the Bible. And there's actually, I've heard actually people with doctor's degrees say that it's the hardest chapter to properly interpret, and I just don't get it, because it is a very, very profitable uh, study, and the Hebrew writer is just setting forth the majesty of God in creation, the magnificence of God's work in the atonement, and the surety of the completed work of Christ to his people. Now, the first song that Mark and Rosette are going to sing tonight is called, uh, what page is it, Mark? Page 26, The Bride of Christ. Okay, The Bride of Christ, page 26. So 226. 226. So uh, I'll let Mark go ahead and start that. The church of Christ, we have a blessing from the Lord. He gave us his son to take and take her home above. For eternal love is seen now, the wear fast and gone. Rise up, my fair one, come on. I'll take you home to say She was his bride before she lived. She had a husband dear. They went for her in voices They caused her to draw near. When she adored with all his grace, they'll be exalted there. The queen with all her glory here was ever half so fair. The turtle brother seen out the winter fast and gone. Rise on my fair <laughs> Okay, the next song Mark and Rosette are gonna sing is page two point seven House of the Lord. House of the Lord, go ahead, Mark. You may see the beauty of mountain and dale of the silvery stream and flowers of the vale. That's a place most delightful the earth can afford. Is the place of devotion, the house of the Lord. You may boast of the sweetness and vainly on of the sky, soft and great, is one day in the storm. But there's no other scene I can compare. With the house of emotion, the scene that I swear. You may value the friendships of you and the rain. And so I, for my conscience, no more say, but the friends that will cheer me on life's rugged road are the friends of my master, the children of God. You may talk of your prospects or fame or as less, and the hopes that I flatter the faith of himself. But the hope of my glory and heavenly foot take away every other and give me my care. 
never hail, blessed him, O my God. I will serve to the God of the Spirit and His Word. I will walk in the darkness and in the light, and be light in the fog, taking me to the God Okay, the last <clears throat> song that we're going to, Mark and Rosette are going to do before we go over to our reading and comments on Hebrews is page 32, Psalm 22, 8. Taken from the Psalter, Psalm 22H. You know my brother, I'll declare the glory of your holy name. I'll praise you where the people be. To hear the Lord and praise proclaim. All sons of Jacob praise his praise and sin in all, all For he has not despised the poor, he has not scorned the rest in faith, he has not turned away his face. From anyone in troubled grace, when any cried to him in me, he heard his prayer and said, Be me. Within the congregation grace, I offer praise you have supplied. I'll pay my vows with them you hear. The big listen to our satisfied. Who seek the Lord shall hear my door. May your heart live forevermore. Dear Lord, we pray that you would be with us tonight in the study. Pray that your word would <coughs> um, be magnified and that your name would be lifted up, we pray. Christ's name. And then the Mark is going to be <clears throat> reading through two verses, and then I'm going to be making a comment on those two verses. So, Mark, read loud so that, you know, we can pick this up on recording. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. To be at the pointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Here we see the affirmation that God spoke in different ways um, in the past under the fathers by prophets both the major and the minor prophets in the Old Testament. And it, he says that in these days, these last days, <clears throat> he's spoken unto us by his son, Jesus Christ. He said he has appointed Jesus Christ heir of all things. And he says Jesus Christ made the world. You being the brightness of the glory of the spread image of the person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Jesus Christ has a brightness in his glory. And he has an expressed image of his person. He's not a figment of somebody's imagination. He's real. Jesus Christ upholds all things by the word of his power. And it says that when Jesus Christ himself had purged our sins, 
he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Remember, when Stephen was being stoned, he saw Jesus Christ standing on the right hand of the majesty on high. <clears throat> And it says, um, that being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, one of the things I want to point out in in verse 3, says, when he had by himself purged our sins. Jesus Christ had no help in this matter. He didn't have the help of man's free will. He didn't have the help of man's decision. He didn't have the help of uh, angels. He didn't have the help of anything says when he had by himself purged our sin. Okay, uh, verse 5, Mark. For under which of the <coughs> angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. It's comparing and contrasting created beings with the begotten Son. Angels compared to Christ don't have any power in comparison to Christ. And said, He shall be to me a son. And it says that all the angels, let all the angels of God worship him. All of the angels worship Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Verse 7 and 8. And of the angels, he says, he maketh his angels spirit, and his ministers are flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness, is the scepter of thy kingdom. Well, again, the angels are merely <coughs> at the beckoning and at the command of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's throne is forever. He is a scepter of righteousness. And so he is holy. He is perfect. He is just. He is true. 9 and 10. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even my God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hand. In Colossians, we are told that Jesus Christ, by him were all things created, that are in heaven and earth. And here he says that in the beginning, Christ laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of his hands. It also tells us that Jesus Christ loved righteousness and hated iniquity. That's why he was anointed with the oil of gladness above his fellows. Verse 11 and 12. They shall purge, but thou remainest, and they all shall lack the Lord of God. <coughs> and as the vesture that shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Many people have denied that the earth is going to be destroyed. But here he says, 
they shall perish. They shall wax old as doth a garment. But Jesus Christ is going to remain forever. And it also says that the earth is going to be folded up like a vesture. And it's going to be changed. But as it relates to Jesus Christ, he's the same. And he is not going to ever change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The last two verses. But the which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them? We shall be heirs of salvation. Jesus Christ, one of these days, is going to make his enemies his footstool. In fact, he already has legally by jurisdiction, when he died on the cross and rose from the dead. He was seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. And as it relates to the angels, notice what they are. They are ministering spirits. And what is their purpose? They're sent forth to minister to God's elect, to the ones who are the heirs of salvation. So we've gone through the first chapter of Hebrews. It's a phenomenal chapter to start with because it lays the foundation for the great work of atonement, which we'll see in the sacrifice of Christ later on. Do we have a final selection? Okay. Worthy art thou. I wish I could sing with you. I love that song, but I'm going to lay off tonight and get my voice. Go ahead. Worthy of praise Christ our Redeemer. Worthy of glory our God. Worthy of all our soul that are Worthy are thou. Worthy are thou. Worthy of riches, what is it on earth? Worthy of wisdom, glory and power. Worthy of earth and heaven, thank you. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Yes, of the voice and freedom he boasts. Thank you all worthy for him to know. Angels in heaven worship and say, Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Lord, may we come before thee with me. It is like the wind, wisdom, and power. May we ascribe thee, glory and honor. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Worthy of riches, worthy of honor, worthy of wisdom, glory of power, worthy of earth and heaven's gifts. Worthy of thou, worthy of thou. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this brief uh, study and singing tonight, and may you have a great week. God bless.